Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, this show is being recorded today live at uh, 8, 18 in the morning. Well, between 8 and 9, actually. And being replayed for you between uh, 1 and 2. But we're going to make this show as pertinent as we can. If you're listening in at the uh, normal time, I'll be back to my normal uh, time uh, tomorrow, or should be. So let's go to uh, John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? Steve, I'm doing excellent. And uh, thanks for taking the call. I, I just have to say parenthetically... It's terrific to have you doing your show at this time of day, especially given the market action the past couple of days gets us all set and prepared to handle whatever comes the next uh, the next eight trading hours. Yeah, no, hey, look, uh, first, thanks for that. Um, and it is fun to do the show, certainly before the market opens, uh, because we get to look at the different patterns inside the equity futures contracts and take a look at both sides of the trade out there. Um, so I know that you're calling about the S&P 500. Is it the cash indice that you want to take a look at? Yes, yeah, Stephen, I'll give you uh, first a background and then a very specific question, please. Uh, First, by way of background, uh, uh, I uh, commend you and Basil, uh, actually uh, a great many of the TFNN team, for uh, scrutinizing closely and getting us prepared for what appears to have been the uh, completion of the intermediate term uptrend in the uh, S&P and its uh, eventual turn lower, which uh, I've been speculating uh, is about to occur and has occurred. And of course, uh, the high that occurred last Wednesday, May 1st, in reaction to the uh, rally in Apple stock uh, in the wake of its earnings, the S&P got up to 29.54. And now it's uh, turned back uh, down. And most importantly, from my mind, is the fact that price got up to the September 21st high of last year, 29.40. Tested it, got over it, peaked above it, but couldn't hold it. And uh, given uh, the price has fallen under your daily TAS profile, that 29.8, excuse me, 28.94 level you've been uh, highlighting. And um, and the fact that the daily ESM9 charts, mm -hmm. the derivative uh, futures contract, formed first a Chapman wave leg G, confirmed mm -hmm. with a peak G. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we all recall our uh, former uh, Tiger's Den associate, uh, Saratoga Bob, uh, finding that peak G sell signal uh, tool, uh, so it's worked beautifully. So I'm assuming the trend is now lower. And uh, Steve, you know the way I trade. I don't like to make forecasts. I just like to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And in this state of uh, affairs, I'm asking the questions, uh, where can it bounce to? Where might it fail on bounces uh, so I can put on low-risk shorts? Of course, if it rallies past, I can take small losses and then just cover shorts if I decline to lower lows when we get oversold and then just do the wash, uh, spin, rinse, repeat deal. So my very specific question is, in addition to what you've already highlighted, 2894 is being resistance. Mm -hmm. 2901 was a prior swing low, so you know we've got a six point, seven point range there that it's obvious to all of us we can try to uh, uh, resell against. If we get over those levels, please, what are higher levels that you could see from your work that the uh, S and P futures might fail? So where are they? I, I think John. So let me let me see if I can let me start answering the question and then you t you kind of keep me on the right path here. So the, the 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 first here's what we know right now at 8:22 in the morning. We know that that key level of support at 28.94 has failed, and as long as price remains below that, uh, it says this change in trend signal um, is is real. Now that doesn't mean that we're not going to have some uh, very large counter trend rallies in the market. I suspect we are. 
I suspect it's going to take people by surprise again, but it won't take you and I and all the listeners here by surprise. And we'll go through that and why that is likely to happen. But right now, the next key level to be watching inside the ES Mini is going to be 2858. And we just simply take a look at that. We know that that's a weekly profile. The cool thing is, is that's a profile that formed right now. So that's the play between the buyers and sellers that is on the field right now. In other words, the ball's been advanced. It's been able to have moved past the midfield out there, which we'll call as a 2894 level. And now sellers are going to try to press the metal. And they will press the metal and succeed and make their way towards the end zone if price is able to close below 2858. That is the next key level of uh, support out here. Now, to go back to the fact that uh, what we both agree on out here is that we're, the S&P is also in a consolidation pattern. Uh, it's more clear in the Dow, but if we just simply look at the quarterly time frame chart here, John, for the ES Mini, and we take a look at resistance being 2885, you're asking where can price bounce to? That would certainly be a level that I would be watching. Um, but where is it that price can pull back to? Uh, so where's the larger picture? If, if in fact, what we uh, just entered into while we're in the unfavorable seasonal cycle is a uh, intermediate term top, there is actually no reason from a profile standpoint uh, and, and other levels will have to fail, where in the bigger picture, price could make its way down to 2467 or 2327 out there. Again, no forecast. I'm not making a forecast. Just providing you and I with some line of sight work to help us understand where there's other support that maybe others would not have noticed. Now, the monthly time frame chart is really kind of interesting out here. This is the ES Mini. And right now, price is contending with the top of that monthly profile. So 2892 is a key level. If if come the end of May, price is closed above that, um, we're going to have to relook at the, the signals out here. Um, but it's it's really inside the ES Mini on a monthly basis, John, let's say for the month of May, what you'd really be looking for to give you that downside push information, that larger change in trend, I would say, would be a close below that 2828 level. That happens to be the center of its profile. So the center box, and this is the lower left-hand panel, folks, that we're looking at, that what that represents is on for that specific time frame, monthly, both buyers and sellers are believe that there's fair value. So a long-term trader would be saying, man, if price could pull back to 28.28, this would be the bulls talking, I want to take a position here. But we also know that the top of the box is where sellers are just simply lined up. Just think of this, I, I just like a football analogy out here, as understanding both sides of the team. And so when... And since the center of the line of the box is closer to the top, if price can get below 28.28, then that really opens the move to 25.75. I know that doesn't answer all your questions. Why don't you hang on through the break and you can formulate what I didn't answer for you. And we'll go take a look at that too. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back with John in Philly. Take a look at the S&P 500.